Max Miller, President of the Baptist Ministers and Vicinity, and uh, Senator Boris Miles, who will be represented by uh, his uh, Executive Director, his Director, Ms. Foster, who will comment, along with our other elected officials, our council member, and others. But I wanted to take a moment this morning uh, to emphasize where we are on the national level, and I might use uh, one of our known media periodicals here in Houston uh, that reflects uh, the national statement. First of all, Texas is now in the top 10 of the numbers of COVID virus, COVID-19 virus cases. In Harris County, we have done a stupendous job partnership of the mayor of the city of Houston and the county judge. But you cannot ignore this headline, Texas has the second worst COVID-19 testing rate. We're not where we need to be. Uh, and in the course of the medical professionals, many of whom are standing behind us today, they have recognized what I have been saying and the reason why we've been working with United Memorial Medical Center to put in place the number of testing facilities from the Smart Financial Center to Jacinto City that tested seniors, Hispanics, and first responders uh, to Farsbrook Middle School, 7525 Tidwell, to UMMC at 510 Tidwell, and now at the response of the community and communities around Harris County and the city are asking and in complement with, we are complementing the very hard work of the city at Butler Stadium, Del Mar, and the two county sites. Uh, the city and county are working under the federal government CDC. Uh, and uh, what we are standing here today with the presence of uh, Steve Williams, uh, head of the uh, health uh, department, uh, and as well, Assistant Health Director Ms. McNeese and Dr. Hurst, uh, Dr. Barone, uh, the mayor, is what we're seeing here is that this is a private entity doing public testing. Uh, and in this day and time, if we watch New York, uh, we know that the medical facilities or medical shelters that they're called are being put up by Columbia Presbyterian. Uh, this has to be a public and private uh, cooperation in order to get Texas where it needs to be. I'm excited about the fact uh, that we are recognizing that, that we're not where we need to be. Uh, it is also important to take note of a number of points that I just want to make very briefly uh, as it relates to uh, what we're trying to do. One, we're going to seek unity on testing, cooperating with the numbers that we've been doing, giving the numbers, uh, and working with uh, the ability to assess the racial demographics, which are going to be so very important in understanding community spread, but as well uh, understanding uh, where these testing centers need to go. Uh, we are by no means suggesting that this has um, a, a racial bend that means nobody else gets it. We're asking the question why the disproportionate amount of those who have died uh, and why it impacts people of color in a more devastating manner. Poverty is certainly one of the issues, uh, but it is not uh, Texas with 13,300 cases as of this morning. Uh, the United States testing fewer than any of the countries such as Germany, Italy, France, um, Canada, uh, and South Korea. We're less than all of those. So we have not done what we are supposed to do. Uh, and we have not done the necessity of making sure that we can do the testing that we are here to do. Uh, so what we're doing here is creating uh, an important partnership uh, and working to be in the neighborhoods, whether it's east to west, north to south, and working with Har Harris County as well. We want this enhanced public-private partnership to continue, uh, and we want to make sure that we continue to get the resources, which is what we're fighting for in Washington. Part of the resources being used, of course, is the no-charge guaranteed free testing under the Family First Bill. That should be applying to those who are testing the public. That is the concept of this particular uh, effort. Uh, we also know that we've had some barriers with the FDA, uh, but in spite
spite of that, uh, we've done uh, great strides here in this community. Uh, some medical professionals will say that our spike, our peak, is not for more than two weeks from now. But we're not there yet. Uh, and we know that we've had at least 86 deaths, uh, but we also know that we've had hundreds of people who have recovered. So I will be fighting for increased funding for diagnostic testing and as well for contact tracing which will determine where people are and what kind of contact and community spread has occurred. Uh, UMMC is going to soon open a specialty follow-up clinic for COVID-19 patients who have had the virus and have overcome the virus. This will make a sizable difference. This is a number that I think you have heard already, uh, that uh, if we open up too early, as has been publicly discussed. And no one uh, is inattentive to the needs of our business people, the economy. But we also know that in certain areas, when the nation gets a cold, the rest of those areas, impoverished areas, or areas that are in need, get pneumonia. Until we feel that we are completely on a healthy journey, that we have been able to stop the community spread, uh, that we know how the uh, contact tracing is working because we funded it and because we're continuing to test, uh, it is doubtful whether or not uh, we can have any kind of uh, massive opening up of the government, whether it's state authorized, whether federal government attempts to do it, uh, it is untenable as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and one of the numbers leaked is DHS, and I'll be having a call with Homeland Security tomorrow, uh, which I'll pose the question about this. Between DHS, the Department of Homeland Security and Health and Human Services, indicated we open up too early, upwards of 200,000 people who die. We don't say this to frighten people, we say this to emphasize the work of the people that are standing behind me uh, and all of the medical providers, first responders, uh, and uh, essential workers that are out there every day. Don't they deserve us protecting them? Don't they deserve us being responsible for what they have to contend with? Hospitals, COVID. 19 patients, numbers increasing, essential workers working every day. Uh, we owe them the responsible action that we're trying to take today. So, Colored Middle School, through the um, collaboration of the Houston Independent School District that opened up, allowed us to open up with UMMC, Forestbrook Middle School, are really making a dent in the community. And we will continue from 12 to 5 today and from 9 to 12 for the rest of the week.